All right, so in this video, we're gonna be solving the following problem. So we want to implement an algorithm to determine if a string has all unique characters. So let's take a look at these two variables that I've defined ahead of time, one called unique string, which is a string that has unique characters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of those characters are just the first couple letters of the alphabet. They're obviously all unique characters. So this is a unique string. And then we have another example here, this variable called non-unique string, where we have this non-unique str. And we see that right away that there's two usages of this letter N. So this particular string is not unique. And what we want to do is we want to write a function function that's going to allow us to determine whether or not a given string is unique or not. Now one thing to keep in mind here is that these strings here have a mixture of uppercase and lowercase characters in addition to spaces. So I'm going to assume that the um, contents of the strings that we're going to be given are anything that is alphabetic, so that is any letter of the alphabet. It could be uppercase or lowercase, and also spaces. So what we're going to do before we actually write a function to determine if a string is unique, we're going to pre-process the string so we can normalize the case. So we're going to convert everything to lowercase, and then we're also going to remove the spaces. So this is just going to make processing the strings a little bit easier. And what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be taking a look at three separate approaches for solving this problem. The first approach is going to use an extra data structure and then we're going to think about how we can solve this problem if we can't use uh, an auxiliary data structure to solve it. So before we get to those approaches, let's go ahead and define a function which is just going to be responsible for normalizing the strings. So what we'll do is we'll write a function called normalize, and this is going to take an input string. And what we're going to do here is we're going to first remove the spaces of the string. So I'm going to say input string is equal to input string dot replace. And we're going to replace any instance of a space with nothing. So that's just going to go ahead and get rid of the spaces that are present in the string. And the final thing that we'll do is we'll just return input string dot lower. So this is going to convert all of the alphabetic characters in the string, which we assume is the only thing that's going to be contained in the string with the addition of space characters, of course. It's going to convert that all to lowercase. It's going to return the result of that. So this is going to be the normalized version of that string. Okay, so we've got that. So now let's go ahead and think about how we can figure out whether or not these are unique or not. So the first approach, the first function that we're going to write is going to be called is unique one, and that's going to take an input string. And the approach here is we're going to use a hash table. So the general idea is we're going to iterate through the string one by one, uh, one character at a time, and we're going to check whether or not the character that we're processing in this loop is a character that is present in a dictionary. So we're going to define a dictionary at the very beginning before the loop, and we're going to see if the character is present in that dictionary in the loop. If it is, then we know that we've hit upon a character that's not unique, and we just break out of that, we return false. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and put that character in the dictionary. So let's go ahead and code that approach up. So I'm going to start to code up our dictionary. I'll call it D. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through the contents of the input string. So I'm going to say for i in input string. And then I'm going to check. I'm going to check if the character in the input string, in this case i, is in the dictionary. So if i, the character, is in the dictionary, then we'll just go ahead and return false because we've already encountered that particular character because it's in the dictionary. Otherwise, if we haven't encountered that character in the dictionary, we'll go ahead and put it there. So we'll say D with the entry I, which is the character, so the key value is going to be that I, uh, or that character rather. We'll go ahead and set the value of that key equal to one, noting that we've set some value, some count associated with that um, entry in the dictionary. So we'll do that for every element in the string. And if we get to the end of the loop without hitting the return false, we'll go ahead and return true. And that will denote to us that we've indeed encountered a unique string. So let's go ahead and pre-process the strings, test it out on this method to make sure it works as expected. And then we'll go to the remaining two approaches for this problem. So what we'll do is we'll say unique string is equal, we'll normalize it, is equal to normalize unique string. And then we're also going to want to do the same thing with the non-unique string as well. So we're going to normalize the non-unique string. So just to be clear on what we've done here, let's go ahead and print out unique string and also print out non-unique string so we can see what the result of that is. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to say python is unique.py. And we see that the cases are normalized, so there's no uppercase characters, it's all 
lowercase, and also the spaces have been removed. So that's the unique string and non-unique string normalized. And now let's go ahead and try to run our function is unique one on the input strings. So we'll say print is unique one on unique string. And then we'll do the same thing for the non-unique string. So we should get an output of true since this is a unique string. And then this one false because this is a non-unique string. So let's go ahead and write that and run it. So indeed we get the, uh, the string here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G results in true, that is, it is a unique string, and then this one here is a non-unique string, so that returns false. So, okay, that's one approach that we can do. So I'm going to leave the bottom stuff here, and I'm going to create another function, which I'm going to call is unique to. This will also take an input string as input, and this approach will essentially consider what happens if we want to solve this problem without the use of an extra data structure. So in this approach here, we've used this dictionary structure, which allows us to keep track of the letters that we've seen so far. So this is going to invoke a linear amount of space. But what if we want to bring that space requirement down to constant? So we don't want to have any auxiliary data structure. So here's one way you can do that. You can make use of the set function that's built into Python. And basically one, one thing you can do, you can make this into a one-liner. You can check whether or not the length of the string that you're given as input is equal to the length of the set of that string. Because again, the set function in Python, what that does is on a string, it'll go through and it will return to you all of the unique characters of that string. So if you run set on a string, you'll essentially get all of the unique characters. And if you have for instance, this string here, if we were to run set on that, you would get the same exact characters that were present in this string, so the length of it wouldn't change. However, if you were to run the length of the set on this string here, then you wouldn't have this extra n, one of those n's would go away, so the length of the set of that string would be less than the length of the string itself. So that's what we're going to check in this function here. So this is just a one-liner. We can return whether or not the length of the set of the input string, if that is equal to the length of the input string, then indeed that is a unique string. Otherwise, if it returns false, if those two things are not equal, then we're going to get false there and that's going to tell us that it's not a unique string. So let's go ahead and just take these two lines, bring them down here, paste them there, and then we'll go ahead and run them here with the second approach. So we'll save that, run it, so we get true false for the first approach and then true false again for the second approach and you know as we would expect we get the same answers for the second approach since it's just the same it's solving the same problem but using a different uh, approach there so let's take out one more approach to this problem we're going to call that is unique three it's also going to take an input string and here what we're going to do is we're essentially going to define a variable which will contain all of the letters of the alphabet, so A through Z. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the characters in the string that we're given, and we're going to check what is this character. If the character, for instance, let's go up here, take a look at an example. In this string here, let's say that we're given that as input, we go through and we check, okay, is we've encountered an A. Let's take that away from the alphabet variable that we defined. And then we go to the next character. Okay, we've encountered a B. Let's take that out of the alphabet character that we, uh, the alphabet variable that we defined. And we do so for every single character in this string until we get to the end. And basically, it's probably a little bit more easy to follow if we do this on a non unique string. Let's take this example, for instance. We start off here on N. We check if that's in the alphabet variable. So again, that starts off from all the letters A to Z. So we take out N from the alphabet, move on to O. There's an O in the alphabet, we take that out. Now we move on to N again, we check if that's in the alphabet. Since it's not in the alphabet, because we previously removed it here, then we return false, since we have already encountered an N, which is why it's not present in the alphabet variable that we've initially defined. So that's kind of the general approach. I think it's going to be a little bit easier to see once we actually put it into code here. So I'm going to define a variable, which I'm going to call alpha, and I'm going to set that equal to the characters of the alphabet. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, L, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. Very exciting to watch me type all that out, I'm very sure. So now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the input string. So we're going to say for I in input string, we're going to ask if the character that we're on in the input string, so if I is in uh, the alphabet, so if that 
character that we're on in this loop here is in the alphabet variable we defined above. If that's true, then we're going to say, okay, let's take that letter out of the alphabet. We'll say alpha, we'll redefine it, is equal to alpha dot remove, or replace rather, replace. And what are we replacing? We're replacing the character that we're on in this if statement with nothing. So we're just replacing it with nothing. And then otherwise, what we're going to do, so if we happen upon a letter that is not in the alphabet or one that we've already taken out, then we'll return false. So for instance, that's exactly the case that we have here. So we go along, we start off at N, take that out of the alphabet. We go to O, that's in the alphabet, so we take that out. And we happen on N again, we've already taken that out here, so it's not present in the alphabet. This else statement gets triggered, the return false gets triggered, and then that's the end of the function for that case. So otherwise, if we're able to get through the entire loop without hitting that return false, we'll return true because that will indicate that we have a unique string. So let's go ahead and finally take these two lines, copy them here, move down here, and then just paste them. So let me just do that, paste them there. And then we're going to replace this 2 with a 3. Let's see. There we go. So we're going to replace that 2 with a 3, and then we're going to run on this last example here. So let me save that, and let's go ahead and run the code and see what we get. So we get true, false, true, false, true, false. Again, exactly what you would expect since all of these functions are doing the same thing. They're just approaching the problem in a different way. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a like. Please consider subscribing. And as always, the code for all of the videos will be hosted on my GitHub, and the link to that will be in the description of this video. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.